In this class, you will learn everything you need to know about writing awesome product descriptions for your Etsy shop to help you make more sales in your handmade business. The product description is a very important element uh, to creating successful listings. And as a seasoned Etsy seller, I know that it can be quite daunting figuring out what and how to write. But hopefully, in this class, I can impart to you all the knowledge I've learned over the years, um, covering basic concepts uh, for beginners and more experienced sellers alike. Uh, I've included a product description template um, that I have used to uh, create uh, listings that have generated over £40,000. Hopefully using that template will bring you some success as well. This class is also filled with uh, plenty of tips about how to write with emotion to uh, bring your listings to life, as well as sales advice and plenty of examples to give you creative inspiration. So I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. You get lots out of it and I look forward to seeing you in class. You've meticulously crafted a stunning line of products. Your photography is on point and you've been geeking out on search engine optimization for days. Now it's time to start selling your work to random strangers. Should be easy, right? Well, there's a lot to learn uh, when it comes to creating a product line by hand, especially for you know jewelry designers, but that seems to be the tip of the iceberg. If you hope to turn your creations into cash, then at some point, you're going to need to learn how to sell. That can take many forms, uh, such as talking to customers face to face, uh, at craft fairs, or displaying your work at galleries. However, one of the most useful skills you can learn as a business person is how to sell with written words. In a digital age where photos and videos uh, dominate our screens, you might think that written word is not so important, but in my opinion, it's more powerful than ever. You can have snazzy photos and SEO your listings to high heaven to attract views. You might even get messages uh, with questions about the item, even though you cover them in the product description. And you might even think people don't bother to read the description, so it doesn't really matter that much. However, the truth is that the customers who are thirsty for your work will read your description, they'll flirt with it and use the information to make a, pro a purchase. And I think we all know that deep down, that's something that we've all done. In this class, or whatever you want to call it, I want to introduce you to the world of copywriting. This is not to be confused with copyright, uh, which is all about the serious sounding legal stuff relating to ownership of intellectual property. Uh, rather, copywriting is defined as the activity or occupation of writing the text of advertment, advertisements or publicity material, aka selling stuff with your words. While I will focus on writing product descriptions for Etsy or your own e-commerce website, I believe that learning a few copywriting principles will benefit you in other areas of your business. After all, uh, any time you write a blog post, reply to a customer's email, or post a status on Facebook, you are basically copywriting. The thought of writing product listings can be daunting, but some very smart marketing people have paved the way for you. All you need to do is learn a few of their techniques and you can get the good stuff, which is serving your customers. This subject could probably fill an entire book, uh, but by sticking to a few core ideas, you can make your Etsy listings powerful tools that sell even while you sleep. So no more waking up at five o'clock in the morning to drive to a craft fair in the rain. <laughs> now, it goes without saying that grammar and punctuation are important when it comes to product descriptions or any other piece of content related to your business. Words should be spelled correctly and sen sentences should have the right punctuation so they make sense. Now, everybody makes mistakes. I'd imagine this document is riddled with them, uh, or the slideshow was riddled with them, rather. 
uh, but it's good to be mindful of your spelling and grammar. To avoid mistakes, uh, I like to type my product descriptions in a word processor uh, like Word uh, or LibreOffice and then run a spell checker to highlight anything that needs to be corrected. Misspelled words, poor sentence structures and punctuations errors can make a shopper lose trust in your shop. Um, so do what you can to get it right. And I hope that this point is perfectly illustrated by the meme uh, where this lady says, I find inspiration in cooking my family and my dogs. Or, I find inspiration in cooking my family and my dogs. So punctuation matters, it saves lives. Uh, so yeah, get your grammar and punctuation right first time. So let's kick off with some good news. Uh, according to Marmalade.com, the most effective listings are short, at 250 to 300 words with paragraphs that are easy to read, about two to three sentence chunks. Aim to target 25 to 30 simple sentences that describe your item well uh, and answer all of the customer's questions, or at least as many as you can anyway. Research shows uh, that regardless of customer education, uh, product descriptions that are written to a fourth grade reading level perform the best. Use simple words and short sentences that even a nine-year-old could understand. As you can see, we are talking about writing a masterpiece of high literature here. Uh, the product description doesn't need to be long uh, and it's best to use simple langu language with short sentences and paragraphs. So uh, what, what is the point? Uh, <laughs> which I think is a, a very poignant question in its own right. And I'm sure if I did know the answer, none of us would be here. Uh, but in simple terms, uh, the product description uh, will tell the customer everything they need to know about the item in a cl clear and concise way, uh, specific details about what benefits uh, the item provides are covered, as well as shipping, return policies and customization options. Expectations are set for the customer as when they read uh, the product description, they know exactly what they're getting, uh, how long it will take to receive it, and any options available, available to spice it up a little. So why it's important? Well, a good product description will make the buyer uh, trust you and help them to make a purchase. I know from personal experience that when I want to buy something, I have an internal struggle uh, where I try to convince myself that I need that thing. Despite my sensible inner self telling me, it's too expensive or you already have six pairs of trainers. What follows is me repeatedly looking at every single detail of the item and justifying the purchase to myself. And you know it, you do the same thing as well. So by answering the customer's questions, showing them what they can expect from you uh, and how the product will benefit them, you are doing them a great service. And I'd like to point out at this stage uh, that some people feel like slimy when it comes to selling stuff, uh, but what you're doing is not tricking people or using underhand tactics uh, to rip them off. They clearly have a problem that needs to be solved you have the solution to the problem uh, and you are helping them. And that is your duty as a business. So I hope that if you get anything from uh, this presentation, uh, you know, it's the confidence to actually get out there and sell your work. Without feeling sleazy, of course. So where to begin? When I started writing this class, I had a real chicken chicken versus egg dilemma, uh, as I actually didn't know where to start myself. Uh, for me, it's a toss up between knowing your product and knowing your customer. So I think it might be poignant to start with knowing your customer. Writing great listings is easier if you have an idea of who you are trying to sell to. Don't make the mistake of trying to sell to everyone. Uh, zone in on your ideal customer. By understanding what your customer expects from a product like yours, 
uh, how they think and what keeps them up at night, you can write in a way that speaks to them. When a customer identifies with the words you use, it makes them trust you uh, and can help them to make a purchase. What you write in your product description will be determined by the reader. Would they appreciate a serious, more business-like tone or something a little more light-hearted? What worries do they have, i.e. the ring's not arriving on time for their wedding, or the ring's not fitting? What qualities are they searching for on a product, like low price, high quality, customization options, etc.? Uh, are they feminine and masculine, looking for something cute and rugged? You get the picture. Think about what problems your customer needs solved. Then write descriptions to show that you are, or your product is, the solution to that problem. With certain products, it's really easy to see what problems they solve. For example, uh, antibacterial hand gel kills 99% of bacteria, um, which solves the problem of people staying hygienic at the office, stops germs from spreading, etc. Pretty simple. Or an umbrella um, that keeps you dry in the rain. But what about something a little bit more abstract? Uh, something like uh, a wedding ring, for example. If someone is, someone is shopping for a wedding ring, what problems do they need solved? Well, of course, they need something that symbolizes devotion and sentimentality. They'd like a ring to make the wearer look trendy and sophisticated and stylish. They need a ring that's durable enough to withstand their lifestyle, so the right choice of materials, etc. They need something comfortable to wear, of course, a ring to express their own unique style. They don't want one that's the same as everyone else's for the most part. Uh, and they might have a deadline for receiving the ring, as well as a slew of other uh, problems that they're solving. When you understand what problems your customer is having, you can also get an insight into their emotions uh, and what is important to them. I guess you could call that empathy. <laughs> so, uh, I would encourage you to get in their heads. Here's a great exercise um, that you can do to find out how your customers think, uh, which will help you determine what type of language your ideal customers use, what they expect from a product like yours, uh, what they don't like, which can actually be just as important, um, and what common features they are looking for in a product like yours. So what I recommend you do is do a search on Etsy for similar products to yours uh, and take note of the reviews left on the listings or the shops. You will soon find what people are most excited about, i.e. it arrived quickly and is extremely well made, etc. What specific words they use uh, and any negative reviews, i.e. things to avoid like shoddy customer service. Um, so I just went ahead and found a few examples of the reviews on my own shop. Um, and, you know, if you don't have many reviews on your own shop yet, just go and search for similar products uh, on, you know, to the ones that you sell. Uh, what you can do then is write down the common traits that attract people. For example, where I sell uh, wooden rings, I notice that uh, people are frequently happy with my fast communication, i.e. answering all of their questions and making things easy for them. Uh, high level of craftsmanship, of course, <laughs> um, and uh, my ability to customize the rings to exactly how they want them. So I often get requests to use, you know, sentimental materials or unusual materials, uh, and people seem, you know, people seem to love it. Um, similarly, shops in my niche will often get negative reviews when it comes to resizing policies. Uh, some, some shops just flat out refuse to exchange, um, you know, incorrect ring sizes, etc. Um, and people really hate it when shops are, have poor communication or there have been like shipping problems. You can also go to other websites to find where customers are talking about similar products uh, like Amazon. Reddit, uh, Quora.com, or even niche Facebook groups. 
And when you know these things, it can really help you to write descriptions that convert into sales. If you use the same language as your potential shoppers, they kind of connect with you um, and feel that you're on their wavelength, which makes them trust you more, which makes them more likely to make a sale. Makes them more likely to make a purchase, not a sale. Know your product. The first step in any copywriting project is to fully understand whatever product you're selling. David Ogilvy, a legendary copywriter, is fam famously known for taking three weeks of meticulous study to come up with a winning concept for a Rolls Royce advert. The final headline read, at 60 miles per hour, the loudest noise in this Rolls Royce comes from the electric clock. It took him that much time to find a detail compelling enough to sell a Rolls Royce. As a craft business owner slash Etsy seller, I'd imagine that you know your product inside out, especially after taking hours to create it, which should hopefully save you three weeks of sitting in an old car. So instead of uh, spending a, you know, a copious amount of time uh, researching your product, you're going to get stuck straight into writing your description. Before you get started, here's a great exercise to help you be clear about what you're selling and how to sell it. This exercise just comprises of four questions. Uh, the first one being, how would you describe the product? For this question, provide a simple two to three sentence description of the product. It doesn't need to be super long or detailed, and don't worry about providing a fancy answer. Simple, simply write down a short description as if you were describing the product to a customer. So for example, um, this one, a stainless Damascus steel ring handmade to order in any UK or US size. Pretty simple. So that's the first question. Question two, what is unique or special about this product? The goal here is to identify something unique or special about the product. Uh, what does this product offer that others don't? Where is it made? Is it made with a special material? Is it rare? Is it one of a kind? Eventually you'll use this answer uh, to identify a unique selling proposition or a USP. And the USP is something unique that other companies or shops don't offer. So for example, with this Damascus steel ring, the ring is handmade to perfection in the UK using a unique stainless Damascus steel pattern. Pretty simple. The third question, what is the main benefit the product provides? So many shops stop at describing the product and don't go on to, to conveying the benefit of using it. Whenever you think of a feature of the product, ask yourself, how does this benefit me? So, for example, uh, a shop may talk about how they offer a Damascus steel rings, but don't tell the customers about the benefits of wearing them. Instead, they should tell customers that the stainless Damascus won't tarnish or rust over time, so it will stand up to whatever life throws at them and look great for a lifetime. The focus should be on providing a benefit, not just on describing the product. And the fourth question uh, is what other features are included and what benefits do they provide? The first thing you want to do to answer this question is write down each of the product's features. For reference, uh, a feature is a distinctive attribute or aspect of something, whereas a benefit is an advantage or profit gained from something. You may not end up using all the product's features in your description, but at the very least, you want to record all of them in one place so you have them at your fingertips if needed. Some products have a lot of features, uh, others have less. Either way, list all of your product features uh, with a short description for each. In addition to listing the features, be sure to list the benefits of each. Uh, customers care more about benefits provided by features than features themselves. Um, I hope that that makes sense. Um, I'll give you an example of a feature and benefit kind of scenario. So for example, 
customers care more about high-speed internet that helps them watch streaming videos without interruption than internet that provides 15 megabyte per second download speeds. The 15 megabytes per second is a feature uh, and in this case and streaming videos without interruption is the benefit of that feature. I hope that makes sense. Um, you're naturally more uh, drawn to the benefits of using something than the features of using it. Um, so I'll just give you a, um, a quick rundown of uh, some of the features that I came up with for this Damascus steel ring uh, as well as the benefits um, so that you can kind of get an idea of you know the features and benefits of a piece of jewelry which at first glance you know it doesn't seem to have many benefits <laughs> uh, but let's, let's have a look so first feature it's highly durable and life proof the benefit so you can wear them without worrying about damaging them the second feature is unique cool Damascus steel pattern uh, which is sure to start a conversation and get noticed so jewelry draw the eye uh, make you feel like a peacock <laughs> okay you noticed uh, the ring is made in the UK uh, so you'll receive the ring quickly and save on import and on import duties it's just easier uh, kind of all around on the shipping at least for UK buyers anyway uh, the ring can be made in any size with a custom width so you can choose the most comfortable fit for you customization options are available such as different liners and engravings etc so you can make it personal to your own style uh, and mock-up rings are included for you to test for size to ensure you get the, the perfect fit first time which will save you you know energy and money and stress so there's a, a breakdown of features and benefits of an item and I would encourage you to go through and list as many features and benefits of your item as you can right with emotion in this section or video lesson class I would like to help you to juice up your listings and give them heart let's talk about how injecting romance or heroic language can make your listings stand out the thing is that people buy jewelry or handmade items based on emotions rather than relying on features or specifications of the product some products like those in the tech niche are sold mainly on their features or specs so if you were looking for example to purchase a new laptop then information on the processor speed the display quality and storage capacity would be a priority for you compare that to a pair of earrings and you'd expect to see much more emotive language in the product description what I always like to do is look at how the big dogs do it so I found this uh, pair of earrings uh, from Tiffany and just look at this product description it's only short but oh my with an intensity that rivals the night sky Tiffany Victoria celebrates the blazing brilliance of Tiffany diamonds the unique vine shape of these classic diamond earrings are a striking addition to any outfit so notice how they conjure the beautiful image of the night sky which is something we've all stayed up at in awe the use of powerful words like blazing or striking as well as referencing how they make the wearer look classy at you know their event or celebration they have planned that's a lot of punch for just two sentences I'm not saying that the specifics about material don't matter because you know carrots make a big difference in price but rather people buy jewelry based on feelings and your description should reflect that I will cover um, some techniques you can use to spice your product descriptions up a bit but before we do that I just want to illustrate the point that every brand has a voice and by that I mean that every brand or business has an ideal customer and their marketing content will be tailored to that type of person you could say that every brand has a voice a way of communicating that speaks directly to their customers think about brands like 
Harley Davidson, who have a strong, confident and aggressive voice that communicates with their rebellious and bold customers. Such as this ad, you know, says, grab life by the bars. Or Nike with their Just Do It slogan, uh, which has created a powerful brand persona that encourages athletes, and really all of us, to pursue their goals with resilience and persistence. As a craft person or small scale creator of handmade goodness, you don't necessarily need to meditate for too long on you know, creating catchy slogans or mission statements to help you find your voice. Chances are that your brand voice will be your own voice, perhaps minus the swearing. Um, it comes down to knowing your customers and what type of language they identify with. So if you make cute jewellery uh, that's aimed at people who want to wear something fun, then perhaps a light-hearted and humorous approach would, would, would be best. Uh, whereas if you're selling high-end luxury jewellery, uh, then maybe formal language is best. Like, speak like you're a butler serving the customer. At the end of the day, you know your product, your personality and who your customers are. Just be authentic, man. <laughs> be romantic or heroic. It would be super easy to fill this section with gender stereotypes. I don't want to be crass here or offend anyone. I just wanted to share a few examples of how you can make your product descriptions more exciting by using either romantic or heroic language. It's worth pointing out that these types of words can be used in products for both genders. Uh, not all masculine products need to be macho, while not all feminine products need to be delicate. But let's talk about uh, romance. Oh yeah. Sprinkle in some romantic language to make your product descriptions more enticing. Look no further than the world of romance novels to find words that will fill your descriptions with passion. One third of all mass market fiction books sold are romance novels. And this genre rep represents a huge amount of sales. By examining some of the words used in the titles or taglines of these books, you get an insight into what type of language is effective at selling. So here are a few examples of romantic words. First one would be uh, magic, enchanted, bewitched, and other references to the supernatural. So our fascination with these words is a result of childhoods molded by fairy tales. The idea of having a fairy godmother to make all of our dreams come true and get rid of our evil stepmother is simply irresistible. What's next? Love, uh, as John Lennon sang, all we need is love. Uh, this word doesn't only dominate the titles of romance fiction, it's commonly used in songs as well. Maybe it's because love is all that we're longing for. Even the guys too, even if we don't admit it. Next up is heart. Um, so now basically this has become synonymous with love, such as I heart chocolate. Um, and the word is increasingly used to soften tra traditionally tough to topics, such as business with the heart, writing for the heart, or selling from the heart. Another word, secret. Uh, as the stereotype would have it, People love to keep tell and discover secrets. It's kind of forbidden. Um, references to kings, queens, princesses, princes, gods, goddesses, or some other honorable title. People are fascinated with royalty. Uh, blame it on fairy tales, I guess. Um, and people respond well generally to um, words such as queen, king, duke. Or, you know, being the ruler of their realm. Next up, temptation and forbidden. Uh, so this all started with Eve giving into temptation and making Adam bite the forbidden apple. So the words such as temptation and forbidden are irresistible words to make your copy or your product descriptions more compelling. Oh, there, and there we go. Now forbidden comes in. <laughs> uh, so the next reference would be... Uh, Clouds, moons, stars, and other celestial bodies. These words evoke 
um, a sense of freedom, creativity, and unlimited possibilities. And then we've got kiss, which is sweet, mysterious, and seductive. Uh, kiss is the ultimate romantic word, I guess. Uh, and then we move on to heaven and paradise, uh, with which are words we use to describe ultimate pleasure, goodness, and perfection. So someone goes, how was the spa? And you say, oh, it was heaven. <laughs> so, you know, it's just cool, I think, to think outside the box a bit with the language that you use. Uh, don't be robotic, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, let me see if I can find a few examples of great product descriptions that use these kind of romantic words um, to, to jazz things up a little. Like I said earlier, I like to look at how the big dogs do things because, you know, they sell things on a much grander scale than I do. Um, and so I've kind of gone in and found a few examples from, you know, very prevalent uh, jewelry businesses. Let's have a look first up at the Tiffany T1 bangle. Um, the description says, uh, wrapped around the wearer in a continuous unbroken circle, this hinged bangle features scintillating diamonds and a strong T motif at the center, an evolution of a Tiffany icon. Tiffany T1 designs represent individual strength and perpetual power worn out outwardly to express what lies within. So I really like this. Uh, as you can see, not all feminine products need to be described as cute or pretty. Uh, this description talks about inner strength and confidence uh, with words such as perpetual power, um, as well as, you know, quite strong uh, descriptive words um, like scintillating. <laughs> The next product, um, I believe, is, this is just insanely good. <laughs> Check this out. This is a scented snow cone necklace by um, a company called Tiny Hands. Um, I guess it's made with polymer clay. Uh, but check out this description, it's absolutely amazing. You've donned your favorite shorts and halter top combo, teased your hair into natural summer waves, and slipped into those funky gladiators you bought last week. Almost ready for that exciting first date down at the beach. But there's something missing. One teeny tiny accessory that screams cool no matter how hard the sun beats down or threatens to melt your lip gloss. With its exuberant strips of red, yellow, green and blue, Tiny Hand Scented Snow Cone Necklace is an all-out festival of colour and fun. The perfect way to express your buoyant and lively personality. So in my opinion, this description is a masterclass uh, in talking to your audience. It invokes imagery of how the necklace will be worn, uh, how the wearer will feel uh, and who it's perfect for. Notice references to first dates, festivals, getting dressed up and just, you know, fun summer days, which I believe perfectly reflects the piece of jewelry. Something to think about. The next piece of jewelry I found with a great description was by uh, Chopard. That's probably got like a real posh way of pronouncing it, like Chopard. <laughs> uh, but it's a Happy Dreams 18 karat rose gold set of earrings. And the description said, there's a reason why Chopard's Happy Diamonds collection has always been beloved. The way the stones move freely is so striking. These earrings are handmade from 18 karat rose gold in a cluster of cloud-like circles that symbolize spontaneity and inspiration. So this description uh, talks of freedom and spontaneity, inspiration and adventure, um, you know, invoking images of clouds and those celestial bodies we talked about earlier. Um, and then the last description I found was from a, a shop on Etsy, a shop called uh, Moon Spinner. Um, and she can also be found on Instagram. Uh, this girl's work is absolutely amazing. So much time for this silversmith. Um, and I really love the way that she writes her descriptions. Uh, so as an example, this is uh, her Alpinist ring 
which is like, I think it's like a limited edition ring that she does. Um, and this is her description. I designed this ring as an ode to climbers of high mountains, rough and sturdy like those who trudge for long hours and days to reach mountain tops that few others visit, conquering peaks far above the tree line, then tracing the outline of the mountain range on the horizon with scuffed fingertips. Dreaming of going further, hiking higher, a ring for snowy ascents and reaching up to bluebird skies. So this is a beautiful description that I believe appeals to customers with an adventurous, outdoorsy spirit. All the references to snowy mountain tops, you know, really stir up your emotions and make you want to get out of the camper van and lose yourself. So what other types of emotive language can we use? Uh, let's talk about heroic words. So injecting some fun and intrigue into product descriptions can be difficult as you don't want to make them too mushy. Uh, so what can you do? Uh, you can write in a way which deals with excitement, i.e. the heroic. Uh, we've all read advertisements that encourage us to win the battle with our email or our paperwork or our tendency to procrastinate. Uh, they grab our interest uh, by making a frankly unexciting activity sound like a heroic quest. You can even use heroic language for comic effect uh, which is possible to do unintentionally too by going too over the top with your descriptions. Uh, but the heroic is a powerful way to tap into our need for drama, for excitement, for a story or for a quest. Uh, it would be easy to go over the top here with words related to, you know, like war, like enemies, fighting, etc. And I think it's important not to get too aggressive when selling something like jewelry. Uh, but here are some words or types of words that you can use to turn dry descriptions into something a bit more exciting. To start with notions of quests and adventures. So from The Hobbit to Star Wars, our childhoods were fill, filled with stories of heroes embarking on quests and overcoming challenges. Uh, the words, words like these conjure feelings of adventure, journey to lands unknown, freedom, possibility, and destiny. Uh, another word or types of words you can use, treasure. Um, so pirates and dragon slayers alike love a hoard of treasure. I guess we all long to find something to value, whether that's a prized possession or something or someone to love. <laughs> that's really nice. Uh, the next word, armor. Um, armor is durable, tough, and protects the wearer from harm. Uh, kind of symbolizes inner strength, resilience, and determination. Um, other words like hunt and journey, um, or just heroic pursuit in general. Uh, these words evoke freedom, creativity, unlimited possibilities, bravery, and tenacity. Uh, as well as uh, words related to you know, like forging, fabrication, or manufacturing, um, related to the creation of long-lasting, well-made products that instill trust in the maker or the object itself. So imagine like dwarves hammering out a magic sword for, you know, a god. <laughs> Let's have a look at some examples um, of jewelry products that have used heroic language in the product descriptions to great effect. So this one uh, is a ring from Bulgari. Uh, it's called the B01 ring. And the description says, drawing its inspiration from the world's most renowned amphitheater, the Colosseum, B01 is a groundbreaking statement of Bulgari's daring creative vision. In this all-black look, the unisex jewel keeps transcending conventions and genders, rewriting the jewelry design codes with distinctive aesthetics and unexpected materials. That's my jam. <laughs> Can you get any more heroic or exciting than gladiatorial combat? Also note the use of words such as groundbreaking, daring, distinctive, distinctive and transcending conventions. This brand's customers aren't your basic dude on the street. The next product description was 
uh, jewelry by Johan and they've got a just a basic whiskey barrel and titanium ring uh, the description reads wood from barrels used in real Tennessee whiskey casks has been inlaid into titanium on this whiskey oak wood ring this stylish wooden jewelry has an interesting history and makes for an excellent conversation piece perfect for whiskey enthusiasts so when I read this description, it seems very simple. Uh, it's really short, but speaks about the craftsmanship involved in this creation, uh, as well as the history of the piece. They've written to their ideal customer uh, who knows how to kick back in style. Um, I'd imagine that, that person is somewhat of an enthusiast for whiskey and wants an interesting ring that will get a conversation going at a party. Simple, but effective. And then the third one I found uh, was a ring by Black Badger. Uh, it's called the, I guess you'd pronounce that, the Black Gold version three, uh, which looks like something the Robocop might wear. <laughs> um, but the description reads, together we have crafted the version three ring. Uh, part jewelry, part kinetic art, part techno madness. Stainless steel has been precision engineered to create a ring with no fewer than eight moving parts. The sections rotate around the center spine with a satisfying click. The V3 also features a triple shot of Badgerite loom powered by super mutant, oh sorry, powered by a mutant mix of Swiss Super Luminova. The Badgerite loom soaks up light to glow brightly in darkness. Badgerite has been developed in close cooperation with the highest levels of the Swiss watch industry. So I like this product description uh, because it's, you know all this talk of precision engineering and exotic materials uh, conjure up images of industrial manufacturing for the discerning gentleman who likes tinkering around with his motorbike in the garage. I mean, even the name of the piece of jewelry sounds like it's a car, you know, the, the black gold V3. Uh, also, these references to the Swiss watch industry and kinetic art really show the complexity of the piece uh, and the talent it took to create it. Um, and yeah, I just love the way that this description um, uses, you know, these languages all about kind of manufacturing to really connect with black badgers ideal customers useful tips for writing product descriptions on etsy i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry about that terrible pun you have a bad man product you know your customer you know the features and the benefits but what now is nearly time to sell but before i break down a great product description template uh, i want to give you a few quick tips to help you with your writing so first up, first tip, make it scannable. Bullet points are your friend. They, make, they help to break down large chunks of text and make them easy to read. Unfortunately, most people, most people browsing for products I wrote there, most people browsing for products don't have time to read through lengthy paragraphs. So I think it's a great idea to include the most important information in bullet points. Remember to also make your paragraph short, say two to three sentences with very easy to read language. So include bullet points. Features and benefits. I feel like we've covered this, uh, but I can't really emphasize this enough. Always sell benefits. What features do you need to talk about with your item and how do those features benefit the customer? Be blatant about it and say, this item has X feature, which will benefit you somehow. I.e., the cat bed is soft and woolly, so your cat will be nice and warm. And following on from that, use you instead of I. A lot of uh, sellers uh, make the mistake of talking too much about themselves or the story of the product. Unfortunately, People are cold and tend to care more about themselves or how the product will help them solve their problem. 
Structure your sentences around the reader using words like you, your, your, uh, to make your descriptions more relatable. Avoid using the word I wherever you can. Um, so this follows on nicely from all that talk about features and benefits, uh, because you can say very explicitly, this item has this feature, so which will make you feel like this. This unique Damascus steel ring um, has a unique pattern which will get you noticed at the party. You get me? Answer as many questions as you can in the listing. Wherever possible, try and make it easy for people to order. Answer as many questions as you can about postage, item specifics, how to order. Basically anticipate what questions people will have about the product. Uh, and answer them. <laughs> Pretty simple, really. The next tip I'll give you is to avoid shop talk. Woodworkers tend to be uh, particularly guilty of this, using technical jargon uh, that only other woodworkers would understand. You know what I mean? Look, I don't care that you mounted the piece in a forge or chuck mark. Nobody wants to see endless technical specifications for a handmade product. Maybe if they were buying a new camera, but not a piece of jewellery. So keep your product descriptions simple. Analysis paralysis. <laughs> Sometimes more is certainly not better, and shoppers can suffer from analysis paralysis when faced with too many options. Seems crazy, but sometimes just having two to three variation options can allow customers to come to a buying decision. It may be worth experimenting with reducing the number of variations, for example, color options or material options on each listing to see if this prompts more sales. Write like there are no photos. Fairly self-explanatory. Write vivid descriptions of the item you're selling, its form, its function, and what benefits it has to the end user. Um, and I normally tell people as well to take photos like there are no product descriptions. I would also recommend to use testimonials. Now Etsy uh, kind of automatically does this, but I like to include testimonials or one or two testimonials in the actual uh, body of text for my product description. Um, and basically include some snippets of positive feedbacks you've received in the listing. Um, this adds social proof and makes you more trustworthy to buyers. And finally, it's always good to add a call to action. Um, so all good copy will end with a call to action where you ask the reader to take some form of action on your listing. Be it asking them to get in touch today to discuss your custom order or place your order today and get it delivered by next week, etc. So I hope those tips have been hel helpful. Um, now it's time to move on to my winning product description template. Writing a product description can be tricky sometimes. So here's a quick template to show you what to include. So I wanted to include this so that you can just plug in the relevant information where it needs to be and it makes things really, really easy for you. So let's start out uh, with, you obviously need a title for the listing. Um, currently on Etsy, the title of your product is very important for search engine optimization. So be sure to uh, include your most important keywords here. And also remember that the first 20 to 30 characters uh, of the title are most visible in Etsy search. So try and explain what the item is at the start of the title. The first paragraph. This first paragraph, you should describe the item in one or two sentences. You should be concise, to the point, and be sure to use a couple of your most important keywords. Um, and then what I like to do is um, bullet points important features. So include three to six bullet points so the customer can scan over it quickly. These should include the most important information about the product, i.e. main features and benefits, lead times, postage, etc. Next, I'll include one to three paragraphs 
uh, which cover the features and benefits of the item, where this is your chance to explain the features, benefits of the item in a bit more depth. Uh, use these paragraphs to tell the item's story in a compelling way. Um, I think it's always useful then to put in uh, a paragraph about sizing, um, especially for something like rings or bangles or necklaces, whatever. Um, this is the paragraph to include anything the customer needs to know about sizing. <laughs> Then I'd like to include a paragraph about customization options, if any. Um, so if the item can be customized in any way, then put those details here. Alternatively, you can add links to similar listings like engravings or ring boxes, etc. Um, it's a good idea to say that you you're welcome. Sorry, it's a good idea to say that you welcome bespoke orders here and that they can message you to discuss any custom requests. Then I like to put a little paragraph about postage. So include anything the customer needs to know about lead times, postage times to their country, any charges, etc. Uh, return shop policies and guarantees. Say, um, this is where you say if you accept returns or refunds, which you definitely should, uh, what guarantees you offer and link to your shop policies. So I like just to say like, you know, refunds and returns are accepted under um, you know, normal circumstances and just put a link to say, you know, you can check out my shop um, policies here. Uh, and then finally a call to action. Uh, this doesn't need to be aggressive, but it's always good to end by asking for the sale or for them to get in touch if they need any help. Something like get yours today, order now, and post, and the postman will drop it off to you in a week. Something like that. Um, and just quickly, um, a little word about formatting. Uh, I like to write the description so it's easy to scan over, and I found that breaking up each section really helps. I like to do this with headings for each section, with a few dashes before and after the words. So like this. Well, I'll just put like sizing uh, with a few dashes before and after. Um, and I'd recommend doing something similar to this. Um, you know, you don't have to do it with the dashes. You can do it however you like, uh, but I just find it really helps uh, people to scan over the listing and read it quickly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you my specific example by reading the description of my best selling item. I wrote this description about six years ago uh, for my best selling ring. It's not a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination, but this product has made so far to date £40,275.57 uh, in sales, so it can't be too bad. I literally have made enough money to put a deposit down on a house with this item. You don't need to be perfect and you can continually improve your descriptions over time. Uh, the product is a rosewood and gray maple bentwood ring with dinosaur bone, copper and teched out meteorite inlay. So this design I have lovingly called the Dino Cop. It's a cool ring and people seem to love the design. So I hope this description does it justice. So. Here goes nothing. Let me fire up Etsy. All right. So we are at my shop, Zebrano Woodcraft on Etsy. Uh, and this is the listing in question. Um, so let me see if I can read this out so you can see my product descriptions, how I do it, um, and you know what's been working for me. So you can see that this product, product has got quite a lot of good reviews um, and I actually uh, did have a consultation with an expert from Etsy um, and they actually told me that my product description was perfect. <laughs> so um, I just thought this will be really interesting to share with you. Okay, so I just zoomed in a little bit there just so I can kind of see, just so I can read it myself really. All right, so this is the description here. Uh, and first paragraph, a wooden ring made with gray bird's eye maple, Santos, Santos rosewood, 
and inlays of dinosaur bone, copper and tektite meteorite. Handmade water in any UK or US size for men and women. Women? Women? <laughs> uh, with free shipping worldwide. Please read through this listing uh, so you understand my shop policies and what to expect. Here's what you need to know in a nutshell. This is a strong and durable bent wood ring. It has a waterproof and long lasting finish. Choose any UK or US size. Choose a width between six, six to 10 mil, ready to post in one to two weeks. This beautiful combination of Santos rosewoods and gray bird's eye maple is sure to fascinate whoever sees it. The first inlay is mineralized dinosaur bone, which has had the individual cells fossilized with precious minerals. These minerals are then crushed and inlaid to add a brown red band of color. The second inlay is a tektite meteorite, which are found all over the planet and are regarded as stones of luck in many cultures. A strip of copper wire brings the whole piece together, complementing the wood tones and shine of the finish. Bedwood rings make charming gifts that are strong, super comfortable and never go unnoticed. Suitable for both men and women, wooden rings are popular choices for wedding, engagement or fifth anniversary gifts, as well as cool accessories for everyday wear. And then there's a little section on sizing. All UK and US sizes are available and can be chosen in the drop down menu. These rings can be made between six to 10 mil width. It's highly recommended. The, 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 the. It's highly recommended you get your finger size by two to three jewelers at different times of the day to ensure you get the right ring size. If the wrong size is requested, there could be a resizing fee. For more information, please read the refunds and exchanges section of my shop policies here. And then there's another little section, adding and engraving and faster order upgrades. You can add a burnt inscription up to 15 characters long for £15 by adding the listing below to your basket with your ring. Bloop. To speed up your order and have it made in under a week, you can add the listing below to your basket for £20, which is like an, an upgraded um, expedited order kind of thing. And then there's a little section, uh, caring for your wooden ring. All my rings are very durable and can last a lifetime with the correct care. It is advisable to take the ring off before exposing the water for prolonged periods, but a, a little splash here and there won't hurt. You should be careful when lifting heavy goods or playing sports. Wood is a natural material and needs to be treated with love and care. For more details, please visit my policies page and scroll down to the care and maintenance section. Oop, spelling error, grammar error there, put two two. I need to correct that. <laughs> postage and delivery, postage and packaging are free. Each ring will take two to three weeks to complete. Uh, delivery within the UK is sent first class recorded and usually takes one to three working days to arrive. Overseas delivery, blah, blah, blah. Um, Da, 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 da. Sorry, overseas delivery normally takes five to ten working days, but can be up to five weeks depending on where in the world you are. I advise allowing at least eight weeks for your ring to arrive to avoid disappointment. For inquiries about postage times and priority orders, please do not hesitate to contact me. Um, then there's another section contact me for bespoke orders. If there's something you're looking for and can't find it listed anywhere, then please feel free to send me a message and I'll be happy to discuss your requirements. For a peek behind the scenes, check out my Facebook and Instagram accounts and get in touch if you need any help. Um, and then I've just got a link to, you know, my Facebook, Instagram or whatever. All right, so that's the description for the Dino Cop. As you can see, it's not perfect. There are a few spelling errors in there. <laughs> you know, the I could spice it up, I'd imagine. I'm better at writing product descriptions now. Uh, but even with that, you know, less than perfect uh, description, I've made over £40,000 in sales with just that one product. So uh, I hope that that has inspired you and you, you know, you could know how to use that listing template to devastating effect. As I am far from a professional copywriter or a literary scholar, I would highly recommend you dive deeper into the subjects covered in this class. Here are 
my three recommendations for books that will help you take your writing skills to the next level. Um, I have actually included links to the books on Amazon or audio book versions on Audible. I think I listened to all three of these books on Audible, um, so I just think audio books are awesome as you can you know, listen and learn while you work. Um, so you can be making rings uh, and learning things at the same time. Uh, but these are, you know, even in book format, these are excellent texts uh, to refer back to time and time again. So the first book I would recommend uh, is Copywriting Made Simple uh, by Tom Albrighton. This easy listen audiobook will teach you all of the essentials of copywriting from understanding products, uh, audiences, and benefits to closing the sale. It's packed with real life examples uh, that will show you exactly how the ideas work in the real world. Plus there's a whole chapter of handy tips on writing ads, websites, broadcast media, direct mail, social media, and print. Uh, so that's an excellent place to start. The next book is Everybody Writes by Anne Handley. Uh, in Everybody Writes, top marketing veteran Anne Handley gives expert guidance and insight into the process and strategy of content creation, production, publishing uh, with actionable how-to advice designed to get results. These lessons and rules apply across all of your online assets like web pages, homepage, landing page, um, you know, blogs, Facebook, Twitter, social media, and deconstructs the strategy and delivers a practical approach to create ridiculously compelling and competent content. It's de designed to be the go-to guide for anyone creating uh, or publishing any kind of online content, whether you're a big brand or small and solo. Um, so that book is particularly good because it's about like the craft of writing. Uh, and then the third book I re really recommend to anyone um, is Influence the Psychology of Persuasion by Robert B. Uh, Cialdini. Uh, in this epic book, you will learn the six universe, universal principles of influence and how to use them to become a master persuader. The author delves deep into the psychology of getting people to say yes which will help you serve your audience better. Beware though, there's some ser seriously powerful stuff in this book, so use it responsibly. All right, so that concludes this class about writing product descriptions. And I hope that this class has inspired you to be creative. Uh, I recommend scouring the internet and reading lots of descriptions from big brands and Etsy shops to find inspiration and see what is working in your niche. Um, as always though, don't overcomplicate things. Just bust out a biro, roughly outline your descript description, and get typing. You can't really go wrong, and you will improve every time you write something new. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Someone smart said that, so get writing. I hope you got a lot of value out of this and you're feeling really inspired to go off and create your own product listings. If you did find this class useful or entertaining, uh, then please uh, leave me a review. Um, it really helps me to uh, keep creating content and to help more people to uh, see the class. So if you've got a spare minute, um, it would be massively helpful. But if not, then no problem. And I'll see you in the next one.